My name's Heather Baird Parrott, and I graduated from UNB in 1969 with a kinesiology degree. And uh, I was born and raised in Fredericton, and I, my association with Lord Beaverbrook started because of my mother, Muriel Baird. And she was very involved with Lord Beaverbrook as a result of the university, and she was president of the Associated Alumni AE, the women, and their dream was to get a, a residence for girls at UNB, because there was none at that time. Anyway, uh, the Associated Alumni had this dream of this residence, and so they, my mother wrote a letter to Lord Beaverbrook asking if he would give his house, which was on the corner of Church and Charlotte, I think that's right where Maggie Jean Chestnut, where Res Renaissance College now is. Lord Beaverbrook came back with an offer to them with a stipulation in 1949 that they had to raise enough money to alter and equip his house. And at the time it was being rented out to managers of the Bank of Montreal, but Lord Beaverbrook owned the house. And as you know, it's a beautiful old Fredericton home. So anyway, uh, so that was in April 1949. And by October 20th, 1949, it opened. It was a 21-bed facility, and it was ready to start as a, a women's residence. And those ladies of the Associated Alumni raised $28,000. That's 1949. That's a lot of money. And they had bake sales. They had contests. And my brother remembers this one. They had to go around downtown and look in the store windows and see what was not right. And different things you'd call in and say, this is not right in Korean's window or something, and somebody would win a prize. <laughs> but they had to pay to be part of the contest or something. But it was all to raise money. Anyway, they raised their money, they opened the residence, and they also got $20,000 from a half million dollar endowment fund. And that was the first time that expenditure had come from that fund, from the university. And Lord Beaverbrook, even though he had said, you've got to do this yourselves, he gave $7,000 himself just to top up the pot, I guess. And uh, so anyway, that was how my mother met him. And they both had this love of Fredericton, children, students. And uh, then he involved my mother with the art gallery when he was opening his gallery, which again was a gift to the province so that children and people could see world-class art. And that's when enter Heather, because my mother, of course, had me in my Baird Tartan suit, skirt and jacket, my Baird Tartan crest on the lapel, and they, my parents took me to this opening. And uh, Lord Beaverbrook took me by the hand and walked me through the exhibit. He took me through, and of course the gleaner was there, and they took a picture of me with Lord Beaverbrook, and he's holding me by the hand and showing me a painting, and I think it was a Turner painting of horses. And Lord Beaverbrook sent me a copy of the print, the proper glossy print, signed Beaverbrook, and sent it in a framed, a leather-bound frame for me. And I had it for years. When Lord Beaverbrook died, the Gleaner, of course, had a big spread in the Gleaner. And this was Wednesday, June 10th, 1964. And uh, many friends in all walks mourn his passing. He was an intimate of John F. Kennedy. In war, he cooperated with C.D. Howe. John Bassett, Toronto publisher, admired him. He knew former Prime Minister Diefenbaker. He belonged to UNB student body. Student Heather Baird was also a friend. I had a lot of ribbing from that, because here I am opposite John F. Kennedy and all these major powers of the world. And anyway, that was at the same time as the picture that was in the Gleaner before. So there I am with Lord Beaverbrook and the Turner painting in behind. So that was the beginning of our friendship. And my birthday was in May, and so was his. And every year on his birthday, he gave people presents. And this pin he gave me, and it's from Bond Street in London. It came in a lovely little box. And, but I think, I mean, it wasn't just because of me. It was because he appreciated my mother and all that she did. And I'm sure he gave presents to a lot of people, but... I don't know about them. I, this was in the Gleaner just last Wednesday, and that is my mother with Lord Beaverbrook. 
and uh, Muriel Baird. You see, you might not put Parrot and Baird together, but that's my mother. And that was when they opened the Maggie Jean Chestnut residence at the time, after their fundraising and everything. And uh, so that was that. This is when, when Beaverbrook died. Lady Beaverbrook asked these ladies, my mother and Mrs. Medjuk and Mrs. Hashi were called the Three Graces. Lord Beaverbrook called them that himself. And when I was growing up, our dining room table was covered with papers and a big sheet with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all the dates for the gallery and the names of the volunteers. And these women would organize who was going to be there Tuesday at 2 and who would come in at 3. And what those hostesses did was tell people not to go too close to the paintings, not to bring in food, and for children, you know, not to be rambunctious around the paintings. Now they call them docents. In those days, they were called hostesses. And these three ladies, as Lord Beaverbrook called them, as three graces, and they couldn't, he couldn't have run us, this was all voluntary. And I mean, he couldn't have done it without them. And when he died, Lady Beaverbrook arranged for these folks to come to London for the funeral in St. Paul's Cathedral. But he had a great sense of humor. And if I can find the letter, you see he always signed Beaverbrook, yours sincerely. He says, what a charming message you sent, Mrs. to my mother. What a charming message you sent to me, and I will get better very soon. I am recovering, recovering rapidly. If I am well enough, I shall be seeing you tomorrow with grateful thanks and affectionate good wishes. Yours sincerely, Beaverbrook. Is that he made me realize a man of that power and wealth and world fame, really, in certain circles, was just a man. And he was such a kind man. Like I just, as a little girl, I would just look at him as a nice friend of my parents and taught me not to be afraid of people. You know, because down deep they're just human beings. He was a lovely man to learn that from. And uh, that's it.